good morning everyone my name is ravi gadani and today we are going to talk about energy sources and sterilization actually we are going to talk about it under the umbrella of safety in laparoscopy uh, but we will also look at few basic things that are required to be learned about energy sources and sterilization so let's begin with a quiz questions and maybe in giving out these questions or in creating these questions i myself came to know about my own ignorance on the topic it was when i was preparing for it that i came to know answers to these questions so question number 1 is we all have used something known we call as cautery and then we all have settings whereby we go and set these numbers the question is what is the unit of these values question 2 is so we all have seen something like this which is we fondly call as patient plate and we have seen that it has two parts like split electrodes or it has two electrodes so the question is why are there two electrodes combined in this one you can pause it and think about the answer Let's go ahead question number 3 is we know that in the market there are advanced bipolar devices available and ultrasonic energy devices available the question is out of these two which of the two would have higher residual heat okay so we shall be looking at the answers to all those questions as we go ahead but the broad outline of this session is we will talk about the overview of the problem we will look at what is the correct nomenclature we will look at the physics of electrosurgery and ultrasonic energy devices we will look at that after we achieve a certain temperature on the tissue what are the effects of temperature on the tissue and cell we will also look at which are the various mechanisms how these injuries actually occur and that is how we will be looking at the prevention strategy because if we know that this is how the injury actually occurs then we can know how to prevent it finally a word about sterilization i'm really it's just one slide there is not much to talk about it we will still look at it just one slide so if we look at the problem the problem the magnitude of the injuries during minimal access surgery because of electrodiathermy that is the problem so over 113 million laparoscopic procedures are performed globally every year this is as of 2020 and the uh, approximate incidence of adverse events which are related to surgical energy is about one in every 1500 to 2000 cases this is a significant burden especially when we know that it is entirely preventable and before we go ahead let us really clear out certain nomenclature so we have been using these words like cautery cauterize foot pad pencil and bipolar energy or bipolar diathermy instead of cautery we should be calling it electrosurgical unit because cautery actually means a passive transfer of heat so you have something known as a cauter where uh, you hold that instrument cauter in your hand you heat it up by putting it in burning coal and once it is hot enough you push it or you touch it all the tissues you apply it on the tissues so as to burn or char it similarly rather than cauterizing we should use word like coagulate or cut foot pad is actually known as dispersive electrode pencil is active electrode and it still is okay to use the word pencil and there are no more bipolar energy every single every single electrosurgical unit is basically bipolar but we are using various instruments which change and hence the correct nomenclature is bipolar instrument if you look at the physics of electrosurgery the fundamental principle how electrosurgery works is 
because of intracellular conversion of electromagnetic energy to kinetic energy to thermal energy so what we are providing with is electromagnetic energy and how is it converted into kinetic energy or thermal energy that we will see so normal polarity of a current output in india is 50 hertz so you get around 240 volt and you may get as much current as you use but the current that you get from the wall outlet that you plug the cell phones to charge into that we plug our tv into it has it is something known as alternating current alternating current has changing or continuously switching polarities so as we all know that electricity has to pass through a place through a circuit and complete a circuit it has to have a circle right so there is two poles there are two poles to any electrical energy in case of alternating current or the current that we get from the wall outlet <clears throat> these polarities continuously switch so the positive becomes positive pole becomes negative and negative pole becomes positive that happens continuously the frequency of occurrence is measured in hertz hertz is per second so when we say that 50 hertz is the frequency it means that a wall outlet current changes polarity 50 times in one second and if we if we if any tissue or muscle gets in contact with this 50 hertz current it can easily depolarize the muscle and someone and the subject will sustain something known as electrical burns but if we increase the same polarity or the same frequency the polarity from 50 hertz to something like something to the tune of 100,000 hertz it has no effect on muscle or nose and this is the principle that we use so electrosurgical unit basically what it does is it takes from the wall outlet the current at 50 hertz and it converts it into the current which has frequency of polarity change of 350 to 500,000 hertz so 500 kilohertz is the usual frequency at which read you know electrosurgery works this is also the frequency of am radio and that is why it is also known as radio frequency so if we just put it on a scale then it is at 60 50 to 60 hertz where all the home appliances work at about 100,000 hertz the stimulation of the muscle and nerves they cease so they no more impact the muscle and nerves the radio as I told you works in the range of 550 to 1000 kilohertz and television works in the range of megahertz but electrosurgery is somewhere between 350 to 500 kilohertz let us clear another notion that all RF electrocautery or electrosurgery is bipolar all ES are bipolar what it means is it has two poles now when you if you look at this diagram the patient forms so the active electrode goes the current flows and there is another something known as dispersive electrode so the current travels as is shown by these red arrows through the body so the impact is at this point only but the current travels through the body this is what we call as monopolar instrument 
but in case of if you look at this instrument it has both the poles pole number one here and pole number two here so there are two active electrodes and this energy passes like this and that is why only the tissue that is right in between those two is impacted how does electrosurgery work how does it convert the electromagnetic energy into kinetic energy so this is the diagram of a cell so you can see the cell wall and then you can see the nuclei and then the in each cell there are some number of cations and some anions so when this cell is exposed to direct current direct current is the current that is seen in direct current means current seen in batteries like battery of a torch or mobile so direct current has fixed polarity so all the cations of the cell will be then attracted to the negative pole and all the anions of the cell will be attracted to the positive pole and they will stay there but if you expose the same cell to alternating current the polarity is changing at the frequency of 500000 hertz which means polarity changes Five hundred thousand times per second. When polarity continuously changes, the movement of the anions and cations within the cell also changes so many times. So, in each second, the cations and anions change their position to and fro, back and forth, five hundred thousand times. When they move so fast, that is what is kinetic energy. The electromagnetic energy is converted to kinetic energy. With such fast movement, the frictional forces come into play and they generate heat. And that is why there is thermal energy. So electromagnetic energy was converted into movement that caused movement, which is kinetic energy and that caused friction which generated heat and that is how there is thermal energy so conversion of RF it is one and there is also as I told you some amount of resistive heating now before we go ahead we need to understand the relationship of current with voltage and impedance current is the flow of electron past a point in unit time it is measured in ampere and it is denoted by I voltage is the difference between electrical potential of any two points it is simpler to remember that it is measured by volts and it is denoted by v impedance is degree to which the circuit impedes the flow and this depends on the tissue there are some tissues which provide higher impedance right there are some tissues which provide lower impedance to the passage of that current the relationship between these three is something known as ohm's law which means that current is equal to voltage divided by impedance 
that means that when current increases this ratio will stay the same but when impedance increases and if current is constant the voltage also has to increase there is a effective hydraulic analogy to this ohm's law that if you consider the net flow of water so this is a water tank and if you consider the net flow of water is current which is divided this denoted by i then the higher is the height it means higher is the voltage higher is the current higher water flow so if you increase the height the flow will increase but even if you increase the height if you reduce this diameter which means you are increasing the impedance the water will go the flow will go down now so far we saw what is current voltage and impedance but now comes the true final important unit which is power power is work which means power is the amount of energy per unit time it is measured in watts so this is the answer to question 1 energy is the capacity of a force to do work which is measured in joules but the main unit that we are concerned with is power so power means voltage into current this is a equation now because of the earlier known relationship of current voltage and impedance we can replace the voltage and current by one of these two and that would give us power is equal to voltage into impedance and voltage into current v into i and because i is equal to v into r it means v square r so basically and it can also be i square into r so these two are main equations so now you can see that for example if you have the power fixed consider you set the electrosurgical unit to 55 watt the power is fixed now as you are applying the electro cautery the coagulated tissue always has higher impedance that means you have fixed it at 55 and now you are applying it in the tissue so after a while of maybe a millisecond or something this impedance will go up when this goes up in order for the power to stay constant the voltage will also have to go up so that the ratio remains the same and that means that the pressure with which the current flows is now going up right and that is when with a higher pressure and more resistance there are higher chances of lateral damage lateral spread there are two fundamental electrosurgical waveforms the first waveform is cut it is a low voltage waveform and it is a continuous waveform it's a sine wave so it is like as as is denoted in here it is a low voltage waveform the second waveform is coagulation it is a high voltage waveform so if you see 
the height then it is a high voltage waveform like and then there is no it is interrupted so then there is no current there then there is again some high voltage then there is again some high voltage so it is basically interrupted and cut is a continuous waveform this is a interrupted waveform and finally there is something known as blend so blend is basically a cut waveform with breaks okay. so if you look at this then it is like that cut waveform then there is some time gap and then there is again cut waveform then there is again time gap then there is cut waveform so if you look at the coagulation waveform there are percentage of time that it is on that percentage can be 5% 6% and that is known as duty cycle the same also applies to blend waveform let us look at what were the disadvantages of a traditional bipolar instruments so earlier it was thought that in order to create a bipolar instrument what we need is we just need continuous uninterrupted supply of energy what we can do is maybe we can create a, a instrument it would have a jaw like thing it would be like a forcep and in one arm of the forcep we will attach one electrode active electrode and in the other arm of the forcep we will attach the other electrode and it should work just fine the trouble was continuous uninterrupted supply of energy what it meant is it did not differentiate whether the aim has been achieved or not whether the tissue has been coagulated or not it would irrespective of what was happening with that tissue it would continue to provide the same level of output the control was visual we had to continuously see that okay now this tissue seems to be uh, coagulated so let me now remove the forcer so the control was visual by looking at the tissue thirdly there was no feedback like level of impedance and coaptation was poor coaptation is when you want to close a vessel so when you catch the ve vessel both the walls are anteroposteriorly are opposed so they are coapted but when they also properly coagulate at that level that is what provides us with a proper vessel seal right so that coaptation was often poor advanced bipolar devices like incision or like a sure how do they differ from traditional ones is that they have a feedback mechanism in place so what happens is those jaws are not just providing with current but they are continuously calculating the impedance of the tissue if the impedance goes up then they will modulate the current supply right there is better and consistent hemostasis there is also less thermal spread why because of impedance measurement of impedance and there is also less plume generation less tissue carbonization because we achieve temperatures which are appropriate rather than 200 degree centigrade which is not required and it can also currently provide 7 mm of vessel sealing now usually harmonic would be about 5 mm and like a sure would be about 7 mm the advantages of these bipolar devices are of course no dispersive electrode is required no capacitance build up what is capacitance we will see later on usually they use low voltage cut waveforms 
so these are the advantages of bipolar and this is the basics of physics of electrosurgery let's look at what are the what's the physics of electrosurgery ultrasonic devices so generally if you see the sound waves also have frequency that is so human ear can hear up to from 20 hertz frequency sound to up to 20000 hertz frequency sound so 20 to 20000 that is our range the sounds that are below 20 hertz are known as infrasound and the sounds that are above 20000 hertz are known as ultrasound so this sound wave also causes surgical effect how it causes it by mechanical oscillation so how do we create this mechanical oscillation so basically it works by exposing piezo electric ceramic to what do you express it to to electromagnetic field so if you look at piezo electric ceramic its characteristics are that when you expose it to a electromagnetic field it would oscillate at the same frequency as the frequency of polarity change of that electromagnetic field so you got the power from wall outlet at 50 hertz you put it into the electrosurgical unit it gave out 50,000 hertz frequency so when you expose now you already have that frequency now when you expose the piezoelectric ceramic to that electromagnetic field it would oscillate at the same frequency so if the frequency of the power is 55,000 Hertz that means that piezoelectric ceramic would oscillate 55,000 times in a second if you can attach a contiguous a linear shaft to that piezoelectric material then that shaft would also oscillate at the same time these are micro oscillations but they are very rapid and if you can have a fixed blade against which it rubs that rubbing will create friction which will elevate the temperature of the or whatever tissue is held between the jaws so when a transducer is activated electrically to create an ultra high frequency which means 23,000 to 55,000 Hertz linearly oscillating surface that is attached to solid contiguous shaft ending in a blade or a jaw consequently this blade or jaw also will oscillate in a linear fashion and this is where those piezoelectric crystals are kept rather piezoelectric material or ceramic so it is in the handle of the machine so usual ultrasonic surgical systems have two settings and excursions are 50 to 100 micrometer the max setting is 100 micrometer it is fixed frequency and it is more rapid cutting but because it is rapid cutting it is not recommended for vessel sealing the min setting is adjustable and that is why that is recommended for vessel sealing the advantages are of course the hemostasis and division of unsupported vascular tissue about 5 mm up to 5 mm in diameter the versatility because it is a tool that also grasps 
dissects, it cuts and coagulates. So, so you can do multiple things. So you can use it like a forcep when you have not activated it and when needed you can activate it. It also cuts the tissue. A lot of times some earlier bipolar, even modern bipolar devices, some of them did not cut the tissue. So after coagulating you need to bring it out, get in with a scissor and then cut it. By using the active electrode alone, it does mimic to some extent the effect of a monopolar electro surgical electrode and there is minimal thermal lateral spread. The absence of electrical current passing through the patient's body. So there is no current passing through the patient's body. The circuit is complete at the level of handle of that harmonic device. The disadvantages are and there are some. It is surgeon dependent. So plenty of times the operation needs to be properly learnt. The tissue sticking can happen. The blade fatigue or blade fracture also happens. In fact, there are cycles. The number of cycles which are fixed after which you need to change the instrument. Retained heat in the shaft as I told you earlier that was question 3. That out of modern bipolar versus ultrasonic devices, ultrasonic has higher retained heat. So we saw that physics of electrosurgery and physics of ultrasonic devices. So you got the wall outlet 50 hertz, you got the electrosurgical unit, it converted it into 50,000 hertz, you subjected the tissue or the cell in between that alternating current it the cations and anions continue to move and oscillate between two pol pol poles and that can created kinetic energy that created kinetic energy then was subjected and friction forces came into play there was heat generated the same happened with ultrasonic device also ultrasonic device also created heat so now let us look at what are the tissue effects of heat so you are able to create heat heat up the tissues but then what happens in tissues so if you put a thermometer and if you just look then 37 degrees celsius is the our normal body temperature at around 50 to 60 degrees centigrade the cell death occurs over minutes 1 to 10 minute 1 to 6 minute cell death can occur at 90 degrees centigrade there is instant cell death and at 100 degrees centigrade there is cellular vaporization okay so we want to know that if you stay between 60 degree to 90 degree what happens is cellular wall is damaged and hence water leaks out so that is known as drying up of a cell that is known as desiccation but if you can achieve rapidly 100 degree centigrade of temperature then the water or the plasma within the cell will be instantly converted into vapor and it would cause something known as explosive vaporization so cutting is basically a seen simple process of linear vaporization you achieve 100 degree centigrade temperature immediately there is explosions and those rapid elevation to 100 degree when you do that there are small kinetic forces which also cause separation of the tissue so it's a simple process of linear vaporization desiccation or white coagulation is when you achieve temperatures which are less than 100 degrees centigrade and as i told you there will be damage to the cell wall the water will leak out <coughs> the remaining material in the cell would now be converted into a coagulum because the protein has denatured the hydrophilic bonds are now being broken but the 
the cell also is cooling down in between heating in between getting heat heated up so then those lysed bonds are then again formed with other molecules so that is how they are detaching and attaching detaching and attaching and that is how there is a, something known as a homogeneous coagulum that is formed finally there is something known as fulguration where tissue is superficially coagulated but basically what it uses is fulguration uses very high voltage electromagnetic electrosurgical arc and the elevation of temperature is 200 degree centigrade or more now when that happens the actual ishkar or the carbon within the cell gets released so that is how you get something known as black ashkar, black coagulation or spray coagulation and a condition known as carbonization. There are variables which impact the cellul cellular tissue effect which are power density. This is the most crucial point that you need to understand. If a electrosurgical unit is sending the same amount of energy and receiving the same amount of energy then why is it not causing any effect at the site of dispersive electron because when you are delivering the energy through active electrode or the pencil that we say it is being delivered at a very small contact area but the same energy when leaves the body it disperses through that entire surface area of the dispersive electrode so it does not cause any harm it does not cause any elevation of temperature tissue impedance or resistance the waveforms i told you earlier if you put high voltage modulated waveform you will get coagulation if you go with continuous but low voltage waveform you will go you will get cutting effect how long are you holding it near the tissue and what are the electrode and tissue relationship the kind of impedance that that tissue is providing finally what is the media between the electrode and the tissue so these were the tissue effects now let us look at what are the some mechanisms how Surgical energy can cause injury during laparoscopy and how do we prevent them? So, first is surgical energy can cause trouble at the level of active electrode. It can be through inadvertent extension or direct extension or it is rather inadvertent activation. Second is current diversion, if at all current diversion happens which can happen due to insulation failure, direct coupling and capacitive, capacitive coupling. And finally there is dispersive electrode, that level if there is any, the way it can cause injury is application site issues or if there is partial detachment. You can remember it by sort of the entry level issues and pathway level issues and exit level issues. If we look at active electrode inadvertent activation, so consider that you have put in the hook, monopolar hook for dissection in a laparoscopy. So you are where you you also are near the tissue where you want to dissect, but somehow you are not able to locate the foot switch with your foot. So you want to look down and locate that foot switch. When you look down and locate that foot switch, it can happen that due to while someone is maybe moving it near you, it can get the button can get pushed and the diet electric ESU can get activated. And if then you are looking away from the monitor at that time because you are locating the foot switch, a unintended injury to a vital structure can happen. So if you see, this is where the monopolar hook is and the surgeon wants is looking down in order to locate the foot pad and it can cause burn injury nearby. So always pull down, pull out the 
any ES electrosurgical instrument that you put in when you want to look away from the monitor or even when the camera is brought out in order to clean the camera. Current diversion insulation failure is the first mechanism. It's a very common mechanism. Long term use of instruments causes damage to the insulate, insulating layer of the instruments. The smaller is that break, the higher is the current density. I told you earlier, the same amount of current will try to go through even smaller space. That means the density is very high. So smaller is the break, the higher problem it can cause. The breaks can be small and even not visible without careful inspection. In order to come over this mechanism of injury, there is something known as active electrode monitoring system. Now, AEM system is a proprietary system. They develop the system plus all instruments with special coating. So this is how insulation failure looks like, right? So this is the hook and here is the insulation failure and so it inadvertently touches the bowel and it causes injury. So if you look at this AEM system that I was talking about, it's a proprietary system. So they also, they not just that they create the system, but they actually, you have to use their own proprietary hand instrument. It has these outer insulation, protective shield and primary insulation. So they continue to monitor that if there is any current detected in this prime protective shield, that means that the insulation has given way. Current diversion, first mechanism was insulation failure, second mechanism is direct coupling. So when a monopolar instrument gets in contact with a conductive surface directly and gets activated. So if you see here, this is monopolar hook which is being entered, it touches the cannula of another port in which case the current will pass here and it will damage the bowel if at all it is in contact. So this is direct coupling. It is also very common, you know this is one of the mechanism that we use sometimes in subcutaneous tissue when we put an incision if there are bleeders what we do is we take a tooth forcer when we hold that bleeder and then we ask the assistant to touch that force so that the energy passes through it. So that is also direct coupling. At that time, if at all there are any, uh, any integrity issues with your glove, if at all there are any holes in the glove, plenty of times the surgeon also gets some amount of current. The third mechanism of current diversion is capacitive coupling. Capacitive coupling is interesting. So what is capacitance? Capacitance is basically stored electrical charge. Fundamentally it is electrical charge. Capacitance is electrical charge. But when it does it, when is it generated? When is it stored? So when two conductors are separated by an insulation, namely two surfaces which are conducting the electricity which are capable of conducting the electricity are separated only by an insulation we will give you an example consider you have inserted monopolar hook through one of the port for dissection in that monopolar hook there is primary hook which is actually carrying the current that is covered by a black colored insulation sheath. Now you have inserted it in a metal cannula which is again a conductor. So the hook itself is a conductor. The metal cannula is also electrical conductor. It can conduct. It is not conducting right now but it can conduct and it, they two are separated only through the insulation of the monopolar hook. 
even if there is no damage to the insulation of that monopolar hook what happens is there is some amount of electrical charge that can be transported to that outer surface this capacitor also creates an electrostatic field so when would it happen it is likely happening when there is there are higher voltages when does the voltage get higher when the impedance gets higher because the power is fixed and power is voltage square divided by impedance and if there is there is open activation which means that you are just checking the cautery you have not you are just checking the electrosurgical unit you have not touched any surface so the monopolar hook the tip of monopolar hook is in the air that is known as open activation so the higher the voltage the higher are the chances there is increased risk with higher voltages open activation desiccated tissue again why desiccated because they increase the impedance which would then lead to increase in the voltage which is already here and if there are metallic cannulas so if you are using the cannulas for port which are plastic this will not happen because then you are not dealing with the second conductor surface so this is what capacitive coupling looks like you can clearly see that this is where the hook is the sheath is intact and this is the cannula so this cannula has a stored electric charge capacitance which can get in contact with the bowel and can get can injure that bowel so we saw mechanisms and and issues and their resolution or prevention in active electrode entry point pathway or current diversion and third point is dispersive electrode so application site issues are when you apply it on bony prominences when it is it is more likely that some area will only get in contact or if you are applying it on scar tissues which have very high impedance and if there is partial detachment so this gives you an idea of current density so the same amount of current is going in but it is going through this small point but it is taking exit through the body it's with such a large area right now the answer to the question 2 why two dispersive electrodes the idea is that the electrosurgical unit continuously monitors the output or the returning current from each of these electrodes if the electrosurgical unit feels that both are equal that means that they are both well attached to patient's body consider that either the total amount of current reduces returning current or if there is larger difference between these two that means there is partial detachment that is what the electrosurgical unit would identify by itself and it would immediately stop the electrosurgical unit <coughs> delivery of current it can as well give you a large alarming sign that you please need to reattach the dispersive electrode so that was the answer to question 2 certain basic protective measures that we can take is we need to inspect the esu for any damage we need to inspect the wire we need to inspect the pencil and all the laparoscopy instruments that we are using we should not put any fluids on the top of the electrosurgical unit it is never to be used in presence of inflammable material like alcohol or nitrous oxide patient should not be in contact with any metal object and it's a very usual practice to ask the patient to rid all the metallic ornaments that the patient is wearing 
similarly we need to use the lowest power setting possible we we just want to give it enough that's it right we also want to confirm and communicate with owner so consider that in the middle of the surgery we want to change the power setting from 55 watts to 30 watts so then we need to confirm it not just that we order but then we ask them to confirm it in a audible voice that it has been changed the audible activation and indicator alarms they should also be loud enough sometimes there is you know music playing in the ot sometimes what happens is there is a lot of chit chat going on so in which case the activation alarm should that voice should not get drowned in the surrounding noise surgeon burns and glove injury very common that poor quality gloves can cause it if there are pre existing holes especially it can happen with high voltage coag mode and especially uh, with direct coupling as well when we are doing open surgeries with time there is also moisture build up so if your proce- procedure is long there is moisture build up in the hand which can also enhance the mechanisms of injury dispersive electrode as i told you it has two dispersive electrode has two electrodes so split dispersive electrodes are always preferred just a little comparison between ultrasonic instruments and modern bipolar instruments is so there was this particular article where they compared these many things burst pressure pressure for vessel of up to less than 6 and 6 and 7 they also compared thermal damage residual heat dissection and cost so what they came up with is that as far as thermal damage lateral and dissection is concerned ultrasonic is superior but if we look at the vessel sealing of 6 to 7 mm vessels or if we look at lesser residual heat then bipolar instruments were superior finally let i'll give you few words around what to do with pediatric patients and pregnancy and what are the safety mechanisms there so pediatric patients have limited surface area and the current flow is also greatest in because tissues have higher water content which provides less impedance newborns also have more total body water and that is how also the tissue flow the tissues has very low resistance the instruments are smaller so smaller instrument means higher current densities higher density we need to use the lowest possible current settings like 8 or 10 in newborn and about 12 in older children or adolescents and dispersive electrodes though are available in weight based sizes but if not available we just want to be very clear that we are using it adequately and that they are in contact with larger surface body surface area use of electrosurgery is safe during pregnancy uh, it usually prevents you know prevents the child protects the child the only risk is of course at the time of delivery if it is a c section being performed then a direct contact injury is possible which can easily be avoided by uh, being better trained at doing that integration with other medical devices uh, especially with cardiac implantable electronic devices like pacemakers so the way to protect is we need to confirm that it is there we can we should avoid monopolar electrodiathermy bipolar electrosurgery and ultrasonics both are safe but there is something else that i want to say that even bipolar has a potential of interference right if it is used in close proximity of the device so consider a pacemaker is put and you are working around cardia for maybe lap nascens for notification then even that can create electromagnetic field which then can cause trouble in order to come in order to overcome this uh, you can still use electro Uh, monopolar electrosurgery as well how it is to be done is we need to use cut mode not coag mode what happens is if you use cut mode i told you the waveform is continuous and low voltage so low voltage and continuous output so what happens is the peak amplitude is always less than 2000 volt so what they want to say is if it is a continuous low waveform output 
the voltage will not go above 2000 which will never create which creates an electromagnetic field that also creates an electromagnetic field but it will create in such a manner that it gets easily filtered by CIED or cardiac implantable electronic devices sterilization is a huge topic but just maybe couple of just one slide about it that all laparoscopic hand instruments require sterilization high level disinfection has no role only the ones that are exposed to unbroken mucous membrane may be managed with HLD but that is never so with laparoscopic instruments for sterilization we have two options ETO or hydrogen peroxide plasma both are methods of cold sterilization if you have autoclavable instruments which most companies are providing now you should prefer them you can prefer them and get them autoclaved but you cannot compromise with the sterility for high level disinfection glutaraldehyde solution is usually used there are plenty of other formations available and chemical solutions available in the market for this purpose so this book the Sage's manual on the fundamental use of surgical energy was my main reference and thank you so much for your patient time and listening. Thank you.